In addition to response matching information being found in the log file, you can also make use of the information during the experiment. One of the most common applications for this is feedback. In this tutorial, we will add feedback to the current experiment. Our feedback will include both accuracy feedback and feedback if the response is too slow, reminding the participant to respond as quickly as possible. First, let's add a trial to use for feedback. The trial will have a picture with a single text object. The text object can be updated in PCL with the appropriate feedback information. We will have the trial last for 1000 milliseconds. For now, we will show feedback after every trial. In a different tutorial, we will add practice trials and only show feedback for the practice trials. We will be conditionally resetting the feedback text, so let's add preliminary code for that also. We can run this to make sure we see the hello text displayed for one second after every trial. To obtain information about the accuracy and reaction time for a stimulus response pair, we can use the PCL Program Stimulus Manager type. We see that this type has a predefined variable named Stimulus Manager. Just like the terminal type we have discussed, you do not create Program Stimulus Manager objects yourself. You simply use the variable stimulus manager, which is created automatically for you and refers to the unique program stimulus manager object. The stimulus manager object maintains a list of all the stimuli that have been presented that are either response active or have event codes. For each such stimulus, it can provide an object of type stimulus data. This type provides information about the type of stimulus, the event code associated with the stimulus, the time of the stimulus, information about the response associated with the stimulus, and more. Because we only have one response active or logged stimulus event in our main trial, we can use the last stimulus data method to get a reference to the stimulus data object for the stimulus in the trial we just presented. To give the appropriate feedback, we will use the stimulus data type method, which indicates how the stimulus was classified based on the response. We will use a conditional to set the caption text in each case. In the case of our Simon effect experiment, the only possible classifications for the stimulus are hit and incorrect, because the stimulus must be responded to or the trial won't move on. Looking at the documentation, we see that the return type of the type method is int. However, the value returned will always be one of five special integer values for each of the five possible classifications. To test which of these values was returned, we will use something called PCL type constants. A PCL type constant is a special value of some type that you can access by name. We can see the names of the relevant constants in the documentation for the type method and also in the list of constants for the type stimulus data. By convention, these names are always uppercase to make it easier to identify constants in your code. 
You can access constants in two ways. First, if you have a reference to an object of that type, you can use the dot syntax just as for method calls. Since last is a variable of type stimulus data, last.hit will return the value of the hit constant. Note that unlike method calls, there are no parentheses after the constant name. One advantage of this method is that the editor's code completion feature will display the names of constants along with method names when you type the period. The second method is to use the type name followed by two colons and then the constant name. Since the value of a constant is a property of a type and not any particular object, you don't need an object to get a constant's value as this method illustrates. PCL type constants are used in many different places. For example, we set the trial type of main trial in SDL using the special SDL value first response. However, suppose you needed to change the type of the trial in PCL. Looking at the documentation for the trial type property, we see a list of the type constants used with that property. So to set that property, we would use one of these constants with the appropriate method. Note that in cases like this where there is an SDL equivalent, the SDL value name will be different from the PCL type constant name. Going back to our feedback, we can run the scenario again to verify that the correct feedback is presented. Finally, let's add feedback for trials in which the participant answered slowly. For this, we can use the stimulus data reaction time method, which returns the reaction time in milliseconds. If this value is too large, say over a thousand milliseconds, we'll append a message to the feedback text. One slight improvement we can make to this is to use a parameter variable for the maximum time instead of having the value buried in our code. This will make it easier to find and change later if necessary. Now we can run again to test the adjusted feedback when we respond too slowly.